In SOLIDWORKS, there are two curved closed loop sketch entities to help you with your sketching. They are the ellipse and the slot sketch tools. An ellipse is a sketch entity that SOLIDWORKS defines by first setting a major axis and then a minor axis. And this determines the height and width of the ellipse. There are two ellipse tools available. They are the standard ellipse and the partial ellipse. A slot is a sketch entity that is first defined using a linear or curved center line. And then the width is defined a constant distance away from that center line. There are four types of slot tools you can use in SOLIDWORKS. They are the straight slot, the center point slot, the three point arc slot, and the center point arc slot. Let's begin by first showing you how to start the ellipse and arc tools. You can do this by either going to the menu up the top, going to tools, and then sketch entities and in here you will see the ellipses and also the slots another way of doing this is in the feature manager making sure the sketch tab is activated and you will see the ellipses here and to access the additional ellipses you can drop this down uh, in this lesson, the parabola and conic are not covered. We'll just be looking at the standard and partial ellipse. And the slot tool can be accessed here. And again, dropping it down to access the extended feature ones. Another way you can start the tool is by right-clicking in the graphics window when you have a sketch activated. So right-click in the graphics window in a blank area, go to sketch entities, and then you'll see the ellipses here and the slots here. And the final way of doing it is by pushing S on the keyboard for shortcut menu, hitting S and you can access the ellipse here and the slots here. If you don't see them, check out a video about customizing these menus in a later date. The first thing we'll do is create an ellipse and just a standard ellipse. So we will click on our ellipse tool and we will begin by just picking a center point for it and dragging out to our first major axis and then dragging up for our minor axis. And you'll notice that when you place, you have options available on the side. So it'll show you any existing relations, any relations we can add like a fixed point. We can make it for construction. So it'd make this ellipse center line. And we can also adjust the dimensions from within the options. So for example, if I wanted to preset dimensions on this ellipse without having to add dimensions myself, I could make this say a major axis of 30 mil and we're gonna make the minor axis, uh, let's say 18 now. And then just pushing okay. And that way it is predefined to a set dimension. And it might just be a little easier with our sketching if we're doing this sort of thing, but it's not always required. The next tool would be the partial ellipse. And as you can imagine, what it's doing is simply drawing an ellipse, but only a portion of that ellipse. So going to our tool, we can drop that down and select partial ellipse, and we are going to draw that just under. So using the inference lines here, we're gonna drag it down, pick a center point here, drag out, and uh, we can use the inference, but I'm going to use the dimensions in the options again to match it to the ellipse we just drew before. So I'm gonna draw it out just a little bit more and then drag it up. And the final thing we need to do is actually draw how much of the ellipse we want. And remember, if it's not drawing the way you want, you can just circle back and go in this direction. Or if you do want it to the other side, you just circle back, go to here. So we're gonna show about roughly three quarters and finish it here. And before we click OK or Escape, we're going to match it to the one above. So I think that was 30 mil uh, major axis and 18 mil minor axis. And there we go. We now have a partial ellipse which matches above. We can make adjustments to these ellipses, of course, by dragging points around and you can play around to see what changes when you move different parts. So for example, if I was to move the center point, you can see it's kind of dragging around and adjusting the size. Uh, if we move from the actual edge, it can move the whole thing without adjusting any dimensions. If we grab a point, it starts to move in that uh, axis and also has a rotation. But if we do that with the partial, we can adjust the partial length. Uh, we can also adjust the axis and the rotation. We can 
move it by the midpoint, so a little different to the full ellipse above. Uh, but just play around with the different points to see what changes as you move them. But that's how you'll edit. Plus also you could add dimensions to resize it and so forth. We will now move on to the slot tool and we're going to use each of the four slot tools to create a 2D profile on these center lines. To begin, we're going to pick the straight slot. And this works by picking two points and then you drag it out to set a width. Before we begin though, you will notice that there are options on the side, which is where you can actually change between the different slot tools available. If you want it to change without having to exit the command and then start it in a different type, you can just simply change it to a center point straight slot from here. You can also create dimensions on the slot sketch once you've completed it. We actually don't want it in this case, so we're gonna uncheck that. With a straight slot, you'll also notice there's different ways that it will be created. So it's either going to use the uh, center to center points, or it could use the overall length. And then there are also options for creating construction lines once it's placed. We don't need that. And also setting parameters, but these are grayed out at the moment. Once you start sketching the slot, these, do, um, these can be changed. So making sure the straight slot is selected, we are going to create a straight slot here. We begin by making sure it is center to center, and we are going to pick this point and this outer point, and then dragging up a little bit. It will probably be a little slow for your machine when you are drawing out the width. So just give it a little bit of time. It's weird that the slot tool seems to do this, but anyway, you'll also notice there's a little um, dimension on the side of it. And you can actually type in a number if you want to preset a dimension or at least just a size for it instead of dragging it out to some random number. So you can see here, it's like 19.42, but let's make it exactly 20. So we can do that just by pushing two zero and hitting enter. And that way it has created it at 20 mil width. We will move on to the straight center point slot tool. So we're going to click over here again, making sure add dimensions is not checked and for construction is not checked. As you can imagine, this time we pick a center point and then drag out to the outside edge and then drag up. So picking the center point, going out to either the left or right point and then dragging up. And we want it to be the same size. So without trying to place it, we're just going to type in 20 again and hitting enter. The next one is the three point arc. So we're going to make this one selected and we need to pick three points. So you go one, two, and then uh, the contour and then a width. We pick this side, we drag it up to here and then it's going to want to sort of have a center line to base the curve on. So we're going to just make it turn into this and then dragging it out. And like I said, it's very slow when it's trying to drag this out. So just be patient with it. Bring your mouse out so it starts to give you some width. And we're also going to make this one, let's make this one 25. And the final one we're going to look at is the center point arc slot. So activate that one. This time we're going to add dimensions and I'll show you why. So make sure add dimensions is checked for construction is not checked. This tool, we begin by picking the actual center point, dragging out to the first point and then another point. If you, if it's not drawing in this dimension, like if I drag out this way, it's going to start drawing out. So just rotate around until it starts drawing in that direction, pick that point, And then we go to this point, letting it come out a little bit, giving it a little bit of time to sort of catch up with itself. And then we're going to match it to 25. So with add dimensions checked, you'll notice that it has actually put in the dimensions required to create this slot. So we've got a radius of 60, the 25 mils we set, and it's at a 90 degree angle. And you'll notice that because this is all sort of solid black lines now that it's actually defined it by creating those dimensions. So this can be a faster way of defining your sketches by picking that add dimensions uh, checkbox. And it might just sort of speed things up. And finally, just to modify these uh, slots, you can, like we did for the other ellipse, you can just sort of drag points out. Um, but because slots create auto relations, you won't have full control over what you can adjust. So you'll notice if I try and move this point, it's not going to do anything. If I try and I can basically only adjust the width of this slot. So for this one, I would have to adjust it by just changing the dimension. So I can double click on the dimension and say, change this to 30 to adjust it. But if I was to create a 
straight slot and we're going to take off add dimensions and we're just going to draw it out here drag it out and drop it now this one hasn't been drawn on any uh, centerline construction geometry so in this case i can actually modify it a little bit more by dragging points around so you'll notice if i drag this around it's moving it the whole thing around if i um, grab this point it's adjusting the length and the width uh, what else can we do this one adjusts the position and the width so you can see because it's not doesn't have any of those auto relations you have a little bit more freedom in what you can actually adjust by moving points so that's the ellipse and slot sketch entities uh, very powerful tools you're not going to always be using them but if you're designing a lot of metal fittings and stuff you'll often use slots it's also will save a lot of time when you are sketching anything like this because if you were to use lines and arcs and circles and then trying to trim away things and dimension things it's obviously going to take a lot of time when you could simply do a slot and do that in one command so they are very useful in specific situations but they are worth knowing about so you'll know when to use them in the future